what's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bill Mike here, along with Brandon at Bullet B on Twitter. What's yeah. up, everybody? That's right. And we are here to join today together to talk about the topic that has plagued our uh, relationships and how we go about them. And it's that two little things that involve, it's called social media and it's called technology. And those two things over our, the years have altered the way we have relationships, how they start, how they can end. And it's just some things that today that, uh, that um, Mr. Brandon and I decided we were going to get together and uh, talk about today. It's something that needs to be brought up because it's happening all around us and we've grown up through it, folks. I mean, no longer yeah. it be like they used to be. Basically, basically, I'm helping Bill with his topic videos and he's helping me with my topic videos at the same time. Collaboration, because you remember like back in the 90s, Master P released the album with so many artists on there featuring so-and-so, featuring so-and-so. <laughs> so that makes sense oh i knew I, yeah i knew i knew i, I was <laughs> i thought <laughs> get it, in it feels crazy no yeah. um it's, yeah, it's some folks that is really social good. media has, yeah it's really changed the game man for better or for worse social media has really changed the dating game man um for better or for worse well it's it's it's, it's growing up things used to be back when when we were younger, uh, we always grew up and, you know, when, when our parents and stuff, they talked about how they used to get together and, you know, if, if you had that talk and, you know, it used to be, would you like to go out with me, check yes or check no, or circle yes or circle no, and it was just, st things started going on or you asked, you know, if it was okay to girl to go and then you met, went by and the parents and you went and picked her up and so and so and, and you talked on the phone, you know, you talked each night to them for a little bit, you know, and got to knowing them that way. And you went to the movies on Friday, you know, and, and went or to the drive in. And that was how things used to be, man, how it used to be in communication. You actually talked to people personally and actually saw them to do it. But with today's technology and social media taking a hold of today's society, man, it's it's kind of taken to where you don't really even have to meet the person online to, to to start go to be in a relationship with them. I mean, you know, with all these sites and things that's come along and, you know, this social media and stuff, you can just about meet the person without really meeting them. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's just the way it is. I mean, you you, you think about it because you, you do all these things. Now you can go to a dating site and meet somebody, okay? You can talk to them back and forth through the messages, back and forth through you know social media through sites and stuff before you even really talk to them on the phone it's like nowadays talking to them really you don't really have to do it on the phone anymore people don't really even want to talk on the phone as much anymore they'll text you that's that's sad that's sad because people naturally naturally love to talk they just don't realize it sometimes but there is that app out there called uh facetime people use that but that's usually for married couples by the time when they get married is when they get face to face and use skype and use facetime and stuff <laughs> you know Damn. Yeah, it's, it's 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 just weird i mean I, yeah. i've always wanted to talk to the person because you know when when you talk to somebody they can see your expressions they can see you have your emotions they know whether you're true or not you know they can just tell it without going through a site and looking at it and putting a smiley face or lol are you really loling that much you know are you really laughing that much are you laughing out loud really you know and and and, and I, know, you know, I, took I took i took i took that literally back on aol yahoo chat rooms when i when i was new to the internet when people put lol laughing out loud i said damn i must be a funny motherfucker because they keep putting <laughs> lol lol at me and then I realized it was just a, like a polite gesture, you know? Well, you have to because there's no, they're not getting any emotion from you because you know as well as I do when you talk to people, if you don't put LOL and you're being either funny or sarcastic and you don't put that, people are going to get, get people will get upset thinking you meant one thing what you're typing when you really meant the opposite. So what does that kind of tell you 
when you're basically trying to talk to someone and you say something, try to be funny, sarcastic, whatever, and they think you're being serious. But, uh uh-oh, if you didn't put that LOL on there, I mean, my ex was bad for that. When we text all the time, whether we were together or not, and she would always get upset, and I would say, look, there's an LOL there. If I put an LOL, that means I'm joking. That doesn't mean I'm being for real, okay? There's, that's what that LOL is supposed to mean because we're not talking on the phone. So if you're not – you you Yeah, and you have to explain that to them because they can't read your emotions with it, you know? They don't know what your tone of voice with it. And that's, that's, that's why I put – sometimes I put LOL, then I put a bracket, and in the bracket I put – I'm joking in all caps, you know, just to remind them. <laughs> like, shit. Yeah, I just, that, that's true. That, that's exactly. They get immune. They get immune to seeing LOL, where they'll still take it literally, even though you put LOL. They're so used to seeing it, it don't occur to them. Like, by the way, I am joking, <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. You, but you have to do that. You have to do that because they don't necessarily just. I don't know, dude. They, it's, it's like you, when you look at somebody face to face and you say something, they can get that vibe off of you and, and tell it. But but nobody wants to talk anymore. I've tried to talk to different girls from different sites, and they'll give you their number, but they want you to text them. Don't call them, but they want yeah. you to text them. And that that takes away uh, – and, and used to, man, cause, and, and I'm not trying to sound um, – sexist or nothing but like used to there was there, it's always been known that women talk the most that's what has always been known throughout life and through as long as i've known is between men and women women were always the ones that generally talk the most but no longer that in social media they don't have to and, and then when you get to want to talk to them they're they're far out at not, not even um um even in the aspect of knowing what's going on because they don't have to talk to you on the phone. Um, but you know what? You know what? This is this is my this, this is my plan. I'll get the girl on the phone, and I'll have a really fun conversation with her that she can't resist, and she'll say, "Damn, I really enjoy talking to you," and uh, this was fun. And I try to win them over that way, and then they forget about it. Mm-hmm. Like like with that girl, uh, Rebecca. You know, she said, man, we, we talked for three, four hours. We had an awesome conversation. Right. And the next day she's back to texting. I'm like, hey, remember them awesome conversations we had? And it's like I couldn't even keep them talking that way. And right. It's like they keep going back to the text and knowing that the talking, the verbal is better. Yeah. That, and that's true. And that's the thing that you have to worry about when you have those com- phone conversations with a female is if they're going to – if that's only enticed them to want to talk more, because it's like, okay, you remember, did you watch the movie um, 20, um, 22, 21 Jump Street? I sure did. Okay, do you remember the, the dude, the boy, Schmidt, he, he liked the little girl in drama class, and he got her number? Yeah. Okay, remember that night he called her on the phone, and she said, oh, I'm not used to people calling, I used to text, and usually... <laughs> on my parents call i'm like don't that kind of ain't that kind of a telling you summing up to you how technology really is and how younger people these days communicate or lack thereof compared to how a older generation or that next generation which you and i fall under how we used to write letters man i can remember and i'm pretty sure you can remember too back in when you were in, in school and in in middle school and, 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 you know, in primary and I still got them. Huh? I said, I still got the pen pal letters. I had three or four pen pals, dude. I had one in Texas, Pennsylvania, and another area. And I still got the letters, dude. I used to, I used to have all kinds of pen pals. I would find them in them wrestling magazines and right. uh, we write each, and then we'd get like a calling card and call each other long distance and talk for a few minutes. And right. that was cool, man. Um, that 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 was more meaningful because um, it wasn't overdone. You know, it wasn't done every single day. And uh, I remember when texting first came out, I said, "This is awesome." Kind of like a you know, pen, or the internet, for example. I said, "This is awesome," but it kind of takes away that uh, that deep connection that you get when you're when you got a, a pen pal far away and you look forward to the letter and stuff. You kind of take it for granted then. You know, so I'm glad. See, we come, 
we come from a generation where we're kind of in between. We grew up with the old school mentality, pen pal letters, so on and so forth. And we're, we're also young enough to experience the social, social media part. Right. So I'm glad. So we're, we're kind of like in between, you know what I mean? Yeah. So my thing, my thing is I try to talk to women my age so they come for a familiar perspective. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And usually a lot of times younger women like me more so than women my age or whatever the case. But I think 25 and up is good for me. But sometimes I might, you know, meet a 23 year old or something. And, you know, and like I said, beggars can't be choosers. And, you know, I've talked to her, but I've talked to these younger girls and I've gotten their head. And it's kind of fun to, to, to figure out their mentality and how young people are now. And you're absolutely right. You know, they're all about the Texan and shit like that. I'm like, hey, you're really missing out on life. You know, you're really missing out on that that human experience, that connection there. You know, it's true. It's true because you you look at when back then, and that's why I used to tell grandma when I was growing up. I said I would have been a better person to date in the fifties and sixties because of my old fashioned ways of dating doesn't coincide. With today's, with today's, with today's society, it just is. It's, it's just old fashioned. You don't see. Yeah. Many- Amen to that, bro. Amen to that because old school works, and it's you know, um, people say, well, Brandon, because I'm old fashioned myself. You know, Frank Sinatra music. I'm mean, I'm all about old school when it comes to relationships, being a gentleman, paying for dinner, stuff like that, and um, you know, because it works, and that's that's what I argue with with women. I'm like. When they say you're old fashioned, I'm like, well, hey, it works. That's why, you right. know. And I believe in taking it slow, get to know her before you love her. Right. Long term gratification, not instant. And uh, it will always work, dude. Long term gratification always works. We just right. have to teach these girls that and show them that. So, yeah, so it's possible. It's possible. You just have to, you know, really uh, try. It has to be a really special girl, and you really have to go that extra step with her and see if she's patient enough for you. And nine times out of 10, she won't be because we know how young girls are. They all say, well, we're ma- I'm mature for my age. I understand stuff. They all say that, right. but you never know. All young girls say that. Well, I'm mature for my age. Like, yeah, we'll see if you can, if you're here in three months or whatever the case. It, it, it's one thing. And, and, and I noticed that with my ex was that, that same thing, you know, they, they're mature for their age in some aspects, but not all. Sure. Of them, you know, and you and, and and you're learning, and that's the importance of before all this social media, Twitter and tweet, because people, you know, and I bet you you've heard of people that have broken up over social media or called on the telephone. It, when you break up, you need to break up. To me, it's always important if you meet them face to face. I just feel like, in my own opinion, and not just my opinion that you should be man or woman enough to do it. But if you go and break up on the telephone or, or it's the message, what, what is that yeah. really saying? You, you're not really, you're losing the human aspect. And then it's like you going overseas and you see these people that marry, they have daughters, they have sons and they, they don't even know the daughters and sons. They're already going to marry. They send their, their mamas and daddies send them out to be married to people. They don't even know, but they're princes and princesses and they're supposed to get married. And um, to princesses and princes are supposed to get married. Uh, <laughs> princes supposed to get married, right, and that's how they do it. They don't know each other, but they know that's what they're supposed to do. And it's like that kind of here to where you're you're messaging somebody, but you're never getting the time to know them. Why not take them out more? Why not? Don't you want to get together and and talk about yourself? You know, it's like that um, that site t- t- not site. It's an app, Tinder. And I know you've heard of Tinder, yeah. where you you slide to the left. Sure. And then you, yeah, you look at him and say, oh, this one, slide to the left. Oh, this one, slide to the left. Oh, he's, he's <laughs> slide to the right, you know. And what you're doing is you're basically looking at the person and you're judging them, but you're not taking any time to know them. It's like these women who go out there and, oh, my God, I want to just meet a nice man that will treat me right. No, you don't, you stupid ass. <sighs> you want some guy that's got looks and got this and that, and you're not taking the time. Take the time. But you know what? Yeah, social media exposed that. That 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 exposed women right there. Because they all say the same shit. We want a nice man, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, 
you want yep. a pretty boy, a pretty rich boy or something like that. But let's backtrack a second. Um, when you're talking about how people break up over a text message and stuff that man, that's always been my experience with women. Like, like my ex destiny dude, because a Texan was pretty new at that point. Well, it's about a few years old and man, she would not answer the phone. She would not talk to me. She would not meet me face to face. She broke up with me through a text message and I called her a coward for that. And yeah. he did the same thing because they want to break up with you. You know, do it through a fucking text mes message. Yeah. And at my job, dude, at my job, Every time I text my supervisor, he'll say, he'll simply say, call me, you know, it's, yeah. it's very, uh, not confrontational, but just straight up, you know, my supervisors right. don't play that shit. They don't play that in the work field, but you damn right. If a girl's, if a girl's done you wrong and they know they've done you wrong, they're going to do the chicken shit heel maneuver and text you about it. Right. And they won't give you a fucking straight answer. And I, you know, I can't stand that stuff, dude. And I just wanted to add that on there right quick, but, um. I understand that. But as far as the uh, women looking for nice guy stuff, I that disappointed me, dude, because I grew up thinking women honestly cared more about personality and my and um my charm and my personality will win a girl over, blah, blah, blah. And I got on these dating websites. I'm like, man, these girls are shady as fuck. They're sitting here, saying, they're contradicting themselves. I want a nice gentleman. I don't care about looks. And uh, they'll find every excuse in the world not to talk to me. Mm -hmm. It's like they got so many options, they don't know what they want. Now, to be fair, not all women are like that. Some women um, marry really unattractive guys and shit. I'm like, why the fuck can I have somebody? I remember you telling me about you was in the theater watching a Marvel, one of the Marvel movies, and uh, – <laughs> And you said you saw this 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 big guy sitting with this really attractive female, and, and it just makes you feel lonely sometimes because some people are so lucky and some people are so are not so lucky, you know. Yeah, yeah. women think I got options. People, I I come off as I like I got options, and really I just have standards. But women will tell me that oh you got girlfriends everywhere. Like no, I don't. The, the game has changed. You know, yeah. women got all the options now. We ain't got shit, dude. In the 90s, men were the players. In the 2000s and 2010s, it's, it's the women because of social media. Because there's always a guy sending them a message to my, hey, sweetie, hey, sweetie. And it goes to their head. And they got to wise up and understand, you know, okay, we got to put this away and stick with the guy that's serious. You know, just pick right. one. They're all the same anyway, according to women. So, uh, yeah. Once they mature, I think they will uh, – they will wise up with that and, you know, stick with one guy. I don't know, man. It concerns me sometimes. Like what's that, that girl Tiff dude, you know, she's 24, 25 and she's so, she's a, she's addicted to attention. Wow. She's so addicted to it because she would get 500 likes on her pictures and stuff. She's so addicted to that. It's, it's like impossible for her to stick with one guy, one relationship that concerns me, you know, Mm -hmm. Not her personally. I ain't worried about her. I'm just saying, like, women like her in general. You can't trust them, man. You want to, and right. it's just it's just tough sometimes. And I'm not a controlling, possessive guy. I don't want to go through their phones. I don't want to go through their website. That's a red flag. I yeah. don't want to do that stuff. And, and it's hard to find a woman that's untrustworthy. And the thing is, um, like I said, not possessive, not controlling, but... I always find probable calls to do, to be that way, to do that, you know, because I knew for a fact uh, Destiny was talking to other guys and shit. That's, that's when I went through her phone because I had probable calls to do so because she was telling me a straight up lie. And that's when I checked it. And uh, that sucked, you know. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and that's true, man. It, it, it really, you know, it, it gives social media – it, it, it's like even when I was talking before, you know, used to hear everybody, you know, I'd hear people say, oh, Bill Max, man, look at all these girls he's talking to. Oh, yeah, you were, dude. Dude, you were the fucking man, son. And stuff man, like you had so many lady friends. Dude, you were the woman with all the attention back then. You had all the women. Uh, I told my roommate at the time, ladies and gentlemen, I used to have a roommate here temporarily, uh, temporarily a dude staying here, and uh, he was on my yearbook. We we were all on myyearbook.com website, and my my buddy Rick said, 
man, I can't, every girl I try to talk to or add on your book is friends with your friend, Bill. I said, dude, you're just going to have to accept the fact that, that all the girls on my yearbook is friends with Bill or no Bill somehow. I said, Bill is the fucking man. And, <laughs> and Bill, you were you, Bill, you wasn't a player or nothing. You just you just happened to uh, to meet a lot. That's different. You have a lot of lady friends. It's not like you were sleeping with them. You just you're just a likable person, and you had a lot of lady friends at that time. And if you could have found one, you would have stuck with her, and you did. You know, with your ex, you found her and you stuck with her. You you weren't on Facebook anymore. You weren't doing anything. Yeah, you know, that's you, a good thing too, man. Because dude, you, I love you, know, you knew when to put it down. In other words. I, I, know I, was, I did that to yeah. make her comfortable, you know. I, I did that out of respect. I mean, had I exactly. understood what that meant, I it would have yeah. would have gone just as down as that. But it was only let's just say that was a learning experience with that. But it, it's okay because I really understood afterwards. But it's only because when I met these girls, I wasn't I'm not when I'm talking to someone, I'm not an aggressive guy. I don't just like pounce on them and trying to talk to them. I'm kind of more like slowly edge closer to them. And where they're like, you know how like a person will see a deer and instead of jumping at the deer because the deer will run off, they'll slowly take their hand and slowly hold it out towards the deer, hoping that the deer will find that it's harmless and they can pet the deer. And then you finally get close enough, you can actually rub the deer and the deer sees that you're not going to hurt it and it'll stay there and let you rub it. That's kind of what you try to do with, with, with girls is they have to see that you're not yeah, that's, that's aggressive. Very, yeah, that's a very good um, analogy right there, dude. I think you just hit the nail on the head with that. That's, that's very good. See, me, it's all about timing and everything. But the analogy you just use just said it perfectly. Yeah, eventually, yeah. You can, that's, that's brilliant, dude. You're fu fucking genius, man. That's, that's awesome. You know, well, it's, it's a good analogy. Good. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks. Dr. I appreciate Bill. Dr. Bill. Well, I know Grimmie's doing it all the time, but that, that's all yep. it was. Man. You sit there, and, and some of these girls will talk to you. They will share stuff with you. That's how I took growing up, and by being friends, they would tell me what their guys would do and what and what they didn't like or, or, or if, you know, whatever was the case. That was the funny thing about it is because by me doing that, it, it allowed me to understand more about what women want, what some women don't like. It, it gave me a, a, a like kind of like a checklist is okay. She girls don't a lot of some girls don't like this, some don't like that. So it's not just me being a guy raised up and said, "Well, I'll I'll not do this because I know girls might not like it." But actually knowing because you're actually being friends with him, and sometimes you can be friends with some girls. They'll try to help you out with other girls. That's just the way it works. You, if you don't, if you don't tend to be a bandit and jump on it, then chances are you just slowly, slowly edge yourself in and make yourself comfortable. A lot of times, females will welcome you in. That's how you get to be friendly with them. When they see that you're not aggressive, they're more willing to let you get close than they yeah. were. You were just trying to pounce on it, and that was why I was friends with a lot of them. I didn't flirt with. Sure, there was two or three of them I flirted with. But I wasn't trying to date them. It wasn't like it was going to some kind of – it was coming out to something bigger. It was just a, like just saying, hey, darling, you know, hey, sweetie, something like that. <laughs> you know, or you're beautiful. Quit thinking of yourself lowly. I call them – and then they might just get mad because when she found a lot of the message, I sent a lot of them when we were broken up. I was just trying to be complimentative because these – a lot of them were kind of down about themselves. And I was trying to say things that wasn't – I wouldn't consider flirty, but I consider being compliments. But some people today can't tell the difference between a compliment to make them feel better and flirting with them because you can talk to some girls, dude, and I, I bet you you've run into it too. You try just to be nice to them, they think you're trying to sleep with them, and all you're trying to do is be nice to them. Yeah, yeah. either they – yeah, they're so – well – in my case, they were just egotistical. Oh, you just want me or something. I'm like, look, I'm just trying to be your friend. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's different reasons, but yeah. Um, one time, one time. Um, let me see. There, this girl posted on Facebook that she was uh, feeling bad or having a bad day or something like that. And I commented and said, sorry, I'm sorry, is what I said. And she replied back and said, you're sorry for what? I said, I'm sorry you're having a bad day. What the fuck, you know? 
Thank you. Also, Something man. like that. It, it's a take it. I'm like, she's so stupid. You know, like the way she phrased it. And I'm like, well, hey, I'm sorry. Sorry yeah. for what? Uh, you know, I'm like, bitch, I'm sorry you're having a bad day. Now you don't take it out on me. You might to rocks. <laughs> I deleted that one. I couldn't take that. Dude. They'll, they'll do that, man. They, they will do that. People don't get when you say, I'm sorry. That means I feel really bad for you. Instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's not your fault. You're like, I didn't say it was. I'm not apologizing. Exactly. I'm sorry for doing it wrong. I said, I'm saying I'm sorry because I I really feel badly for you that you're having to endure this or having to go with that. It was just funny to me how they would basically do that. And, you know, I just got really, I was just laughing at them. I'm like, for now, I'll just say, I'm sorry for this or I'm sorry for that. So they're just saying, I'm sorry because they don't get it then. But, uh, yeah, man, it just, it's just because they have those options and those sites like my yearbook and Facebook and MySpace and Tagged and all in high, high five, all these old ones that used to be out there were for that. It was for socializing, you know, but like I said, as, as Facebook has blown up, every other one of these sites just about has really just yeah. broken down. I've had girls, I've tried to talk to girls. Uh, one time I met on, I don't know if it was, I think it might have been at Plenty of Fish, and I talked to her. She wanted me to get beer for her, and <laughs> she could do some things to me if I got her some beer because she couldn't go out late. She claimed she was from Leland, and she wrote in my inbox just out of nowhere. I mean, dude, I didn't even know, you know, because she was close by and, and stuff, and she was like, she was in that, she was like, well, oh, I'm in the house, and I don't know what she was on. But she was like, oh, I'm in the house and I can't, you know, I can't, it's late and I don't, can't get out. But if you come by and get some alcohol and bring it to me, then I'll do this for you and I'll do that for you. And I'm like, what? You know, what are, what are you talking about? I don't even know who you are. You know, she says, if you go, hurry up, you know, uh, can you hurry up? Because they're going to close and so. And I'm like, really? You know, I'm like, I don't know who you are. But that's just how people get on these sites. And it's like you said, they can look. And whichever one they want to count down, and where one guy may tell them no, they've got 10 others that'll tell them yeah, or they'll say, oh, well, I can do it if they can't do it, or I can be there for you if the other one can't. But really, it's just one person trying to just get opportunity to get their foot in the door where they can try to jump on it. They're not trying to really get to know that person because if you really like someone or want to get to know them, you're going to want to get to know them, you know, jumping in them, jumping um. And judging them ain't gonna ain't gonna help things go any smoother at, at all anyway. And I tried to yeah, dude. I, I asked the girl straight up. I took this girl out on a date. I said, Are you looking for something serious? She said, Why you got to be all serious? Just chill out and enjoy the day. I said, No. I said it's a fair question. Are you looking for a serious relationship? Or are you just casually dating people, meeting people? I had to know because back in two thousand and eleven I was meeting girls left and right off POF, man. And all of them were just getting a free meal out of me. You know, they message me back. I take them out Monday night, nice dinner, movie, whatever. And then they'll talk to Frank or Alex the next day and get another free meal out of it. So I figured that out, that what they were doing. And like with that Lou Kane chick, she was guilty of doing that shit. So I figured that part out. And I, that's when I said, look, if, when I talked to a girl on a dating website, I said, we're going to meet in the park. Meet somewhere free. And if you call me after that, then I'll take you out on a date. I just want to make sure that you're interested in me because it just costs too much money. You're right. like, are you looking for – like? it's like a lot of girls are just on there looking for a good day. They, they won't even give you no pussy or nothing. They're just looking for a good day, you know, casually meeting people. That's why I try to say, hey, are you serious? Are you looking for a relationship or are you just fucking around? And they're like, well, you got to be all serious. I'm like, look, it's a fair question, you know. Right. And them saying that pretty much answers the question itself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It makes perfect sense. You know, you, yeah. you just have to do all that you can. And, you know, just, I don't know, you just try and just, uh, you want to get to know, I mean, that's why you take them out to these places, why you want to go out with them, to take time and say, you know, and like I always like playing out, the, the, a lot of them calls it 25 question um, game, but, that's helpful, helpful in helping you to learn a little bit about them. You know, what's your favorite Absolutely. color? What cartoon character do you like? Um, where, you know, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite sport? Do you like sports? Do you like that's, reading? That's, yeah, that's the fundamentals of building. A, that's the foundation of building a relationship, friendship, then relationship, whatever. That's the foundation of it. That's how you mm -hmm. start it off. 
you know. Exactly. Yeah. Because if you don't do something, how are you supposed to know who you're with if you're not going to talk about anything about yourself? I don't mean just where you work at or what you do, but just things about you, you know, things about your family. Are you a family-oriented person? Are you just a loner? Are you someone who likes to go out and, and you know, uh, to go watch a race? Do you like to go hunting? You know, all these kinds of things. Do you like cheeseburgers? Do you like eating expensive places? You just try to get the feel out of that person um, so that, you know, basically, you, you know, you'll know whether you can get close or not because me typing on the computer ain't going to help me get any closer to no female. Sure, you can flirt with them, you can type the words out, but that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what? Uh, hey, I'm gonna. Uh, okay. Well, I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna put on this pizza here in the oven. I'll be right back. So, continue right. to elaborate on that, if you will. Yeah. Go right ahead, sir. Um, it's 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 just in, in today's times, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it 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 really that that's where technology really rules things out because it eliminates a lot of that contact. You know. There's nothing like talking to someone because you don't. With, with, when you fall in love with someone, it can be something that's instant or something that could take weeks or months for you to fall in love. But me, I feel like if you can, you can meet someone. It's like one of my exes. I met her um, in, in in the next town over, and we had. It's like when she came out of that uh, out of the, out of the store. I seen her and it's like, I felt like this aura about her. There was just something I'm like, wow, because this person here, we met on the messenger, we messaged a little bit, we got a phone, we text, then we talked on the phone. But it was kind of a quick, it wasn't, it's like over a couple days that this happened. But when I met her and saw her face to face, I liked her. I dug her. And I'm like, wow, you know. And we spent the whole evening together, you know, we went by the old, um, well, for you, for those of you who may not know, there's, uh, there's old train depot. They've turned into a like a where you can use it as a different uh, multi-purpose using um, hall. But it was the old train depot, and her and I sit there after we ate, and her and I sit on the benches there, and we just talked, you know, and we got to talking, and we were close and stuff and all, and you know, and we just spent that whole. It's like that whole day evening night was was come you know and time we left it was late you know the lights and stuff was on because everything would turn dark and you know i kissed her kissed her before she left but it was like i felt that feeling was there now had i been texting her uh, or kicking her or snapchatting her or instagramming her or anything like that could could that impact have happened the same way i don't think so because it, it there's a it eliminates there's too much it's taken away by using technology that takes away from actual human existence. That's why they always joke about computers taking over humans and stuff like that. But there's just some things human computers, no matter what, will never be able to have human emotion, reaction, all these things that are there to feel. That's human beings. That's what makes humans different than anybody else into having these feelings. But you going on and me meeting her and us so spending time together, that was something that you had to do through person-to-person -person interaction, not, hey, let me get you a Facebook page and Facebook each other, and let me send you an emoji real quick and send that, or let me send you a smiley face or a like, you know, like my page. Um, but it was basically us talking, you know, and another relationship, um, this was a long distance one. This was one sort of what they call, which I know days, these days and times called um, over the internet. That was a long distance relationship. Me and this girl that I truly, truly liked, um, we met, we, we talked, we started building it slow, but then we got to talking on the telephone over time. It was about six months or so that we talked before we ended up just, things just couldn't be worked out. We could be together because of this and some and other factors um uh, in but i fell for this girl she liked me we sang we kept up with each other and all and i really liked her and if she if circumstances could have been to where we could have been together we could have been together today that's just how 
I felt about her. But had I just stuck to messaging her and never talked to her, never texted her, never sent pictures back and forth to each other, some kind of interaction to where you're having it and not taking a, letting social media and technology taking everything away, you ask yourself, could it really have lasted? Can this, can this relationship, had we went through social media rather than person-to-person -person interaction, could it have lasted? Could it have made it like it should have? And, and nine times out of ten, folks, I'm just going to flat out tell you, no, it won't. No, you won't. That's what technology and social media does. It just it, it, it takes you away because back when you talked on Yahoo Messenger, and I know and, and Brandon, he he has dealt with, uh, he was more AOL Messenger and AOL stuff. He knows when even chatting in the AOL rooms, like I did with the Yahoo rooms and stuff, you met people that way, and that was it. You didn't have all these platforms to talk on. Hey, check out my Instagram. Hey, check out this. You just had Yahoo and AOL, and that's how you met people. And this other girl I talked to, me and her used to go in the Yahoo chat rooms together. Um, she was she liked to sing, and I like country, one of the few uh, kinds of genres I'd like. But she liked it too, and we went into these things, and we had a good time. We interacted. We met on here because she was like up in New York somewhere, and I was here. And we just went and interacted that way, and we talked and stuff and talked on the phone and sent pictures and stuff. We interacted that way. But that's, she got time to know me and like me, and I'm sure um, my Brandon can tell you too. If girls, if you give girls time, they give you time to talk to you and they like that personality, they're more willing to give you a chance rather than you just being a picture on a on an application that somebody skips over because you may not have the looks. Everybody may not have the looks and they don't. You may just have personality, but that's what keeps somebody. Beauty on the inside can get ugly. Uh, can, can get ugly. Beauty on the outside can get ugly. But if you have beauty on the inside, it doesn't ever have to fade away. You can always be there and you be that beautiful person inside. And if they like you, they'll do that. So that's just me and, and my input on how I feel about having these things that takes away from human interaction. I know. Like, oh, 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 oh. oh, echo, echo. Uh, I, know, I, um, I know like on Facebook, I would use SoundCloud to send audio clips to girls I'm talking to, you know, on Facebook through the private messages. And uh, they would like that. It's like, wow, you got a nice personality. You seem like a nice guy. They're more likely to talk to me when I send them a voice clip because it all goes back to the fundamentals, man. Um, actually, human communication or human contact, it just works better. And SoundCloud is very, very good for for making quick voice clips to send to girls. You come off more legitimate. You stand out a little bit. They take you more seriously in a way, you know. But I can't stand I can't stand social media sometimes, man, because like you were saying earlier about the Tinders and the Twitters and, you know, follow me here, follow me there, and you just kind of talk to the girl. Whereas back in the day, man, you talk to a girl, um, it was a deeper – connection because she was she was more she was lonely like we are you know and i was like hey you know nice to meet you sarah for example i'll pick you up friday you know and she would look forward to that friday you pick her up friday and you know it was just a deeper connection with with, with so much instant contact nowadays it just it takes that away and women got to have strong willpower to really focus on a single relationship. So my thing with social media is I just play the game with it if I feel like it. I try to give them the best compliments, comments, and I do the voice clip thing to really um, get them interested. And if that don't work, fuck it. You know, and half the time I don't even want to do all that work, but that's usually my strategy. I will understand social media and I will play, I will play social media to my advantage because what else can I do? But right. um, I wish it was. I wish it was easier, you know. But that's why I said, you know, send the voice clips. Send them voice clips, and they'll like it. They're like, well, damn, this guy, you know, he seems legit. He comes up. I forgot about that, you know, <laughs> things like that. So, All right. Uh, the women love sex, so they're gonna get with somebody somewhere. You oh. know, I get. It. But um, 
But yeah, man, everything you're saying is on point, dude. I can't I can't argue that, you know. Well, and, and two and two dude is 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 being separate, is is being now I'm kinda gonna jump to the opposite side because I feel not only um not only is there issues with that being a problem, I feel as in some point that uh, that it can be something that is um, helpful. Okay, and by getting into detail with that, um, I will say this: technology in some instances, and I will say this: not meeting people, but when you've got into a relationship, I feel as that having social media sometimes can be helpful into a point this is when you're in a true relationship i don't mean the girls i'm not giving scenarios where the girls have all these other guys i'm saying you're true to her she's true to you you know you can you can actually be you can actually have more activity talking to her than you did before because used to unless you wrote them a letter or you talked to them for a few minutes on the phone and that you were able to uh because i mean i don't know about you but I know after growing up that I had certain I could use the phone at certain times, but I couldn't use it very long. You know that, that my, my grandma just didn't allow us to be on the phone that, too uh, too long. So even growing up, it was that way until I got my cell phone. Yeah, we, 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 we slight, slightly differ there because I I stayed on the phone, dude. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, um, my best friend Justin, not 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 ravenous, but another Justin, man. We were we were best friends uh, during elementary school, middle school. I stay on the phone all day, man, talking to him because there's nothing else to do. You know, that was the internet before the internet. Staying on that phone, and then um, uh, staying here with my mom um, during my teen days, I got my own private phone. Before cell phones were common, I had my own private phone back there, and man, oh. I was talking I was talking to girls all the time on the phone three-way call and stuff, made my prank call tapes and shit like that. But right. I just didn't have a car to go see them and mm. um, stuff like that. So the phone thing, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was definitely a, a phone social person growing up. <laughs> I, I, couldn't live without my, I couldn't live without my cordless phone, man, or, or whatever the case. You know, that, that was uh, pretty cool back then, man. Well, yeah, in, in, um, my, in my instance, it was just... Talking's always, verbal talking's always better than fucking... Um, just internet. I mean, internet's cool too, but it's just like a typewriter. You have to phrase everything like you're like you're writing a letter when you're talking online. That's why people misinterpret what you say or what I say or whatever the case. <clears throat> There's a way of talking when you talk in a, in an email or a letter. You know, you phrase yeah. it like, "Well, in my opinion, from my perspective, and this is how." I'm, but when you're talking, just you know, talking to somebody in person in a bar or wherever. It's different, you know, because most communication is nonverbal. So yeah. then you can, really, um, they can really understand where you're coming from. Get your, feel your vibe. Yeah, you know, that's stuff. true. And at some points, is as I was saying, you know, too with it is that with at least with like the good things aspects of social media, is that like you can't always talk on the phone. There's going to be points and times to where like let's say scenarios that you're in high. Uh, college and or you're at work and maybe you can send your girl a text or something you know thinking about you or yeah, you know, and, and that's a good thing because used to before text messaging and these sites come you couldn't do that you know um like i said i've re i was one that was very deprived of really having a phone so i rarely got that opportunity to be on it as much growing up but when i started getting like my computer and stuff and I started getting these sites where you could you know talk to more people and and and, and have your voice hurt it made things a lot easier for me and you know it, when you're dating somebody like even today even though Yahoo Messenger is still here you know Skype is really taking over because you have video on it you know you have uh, so you can still text while you're uh, while you're talking on it um, to me yeah. it just, I just felt like in in that instance it's a good thing because used to in my according in my particular case, it would have helped me out a whole lot had I been able to have like an application or or a text messaging to a girl. Because before then, you never knew what they were doing the whole week. You know, unless you like you said you were able to have a, a line, a private line or something where you could actually talk to them. 
you never really knew what they were doing all weekend. And then you'd have to wait all week long to Friday night or Saturday night to talk to them. And then like one girl I dated, I seen her at church. So I would get to talk to her Friday and then I would see her at church on Sunday and Wednesday. But other than that, I didn't hear anything else from her because I just wasn't able to. So there is a couple, two to three things maybe that are good with, with social media that kind of help you, but it's when you're actually in one and with the person you love. Because if you get a girl yeah. or a guy that's flirty, they they can say, I love you, all they want to your face, but they can flirt with Steve, Joe, Bob, Lee, all these other people here while they're telling you this because that's the kind of thing they are. It's just it's just as good as it is bad. It's still the wild west. The internet's like the wild west. Yeah. But it really it really concerns me, man, because I feel like on the negative side, it really concerns me because I feel like it's gonna turn everybody into players and you're you're always just one text away from talking to somebody else and it's really dangerous and uh that, that really – kind of like how it exposed the wrestling business. And I think it's kind of exposed relationships a lot. It, it, it's just a you know minor concern. But on the positive, though, you know, like you are saying, like if you're busy or something or if you're driving to your girlfriend's house, you can send a quick text and put OMW on my way or mm -hmm. quit, or if you're at your job and you got a text, you know, that's when it comes in handy. It's useful. It really is useful. Right. And – uh yeah, I, I love the internet. I remember when I first, I finally got the internet, dude. I, it was so amazing to me. And for my first thought was, I got to get on a dating website because now I can actually talk to people because I was kind of shy. I don't, I don't go to clubs and stuff like that. And the internet was a really cool place for me to find women to talk to and stuff right. like that. That's the benefit of it. But on the flip side, every other guy's trying to talk to some some girl as well. Yeah, you know, but it's, it's cool because you can actually speak to women. You know, you don't have to go in the in the grocery store and try to flirt with the girl on aisle five every time. And you know, that time you took me to Lumberton, I met Yokozuna's daughter and all this other <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but it was cool. Now I'm I'm so old school. I used to call this date and site uh, telephone number. Where you call this telephone number. <laughs> I, you pay a membership, you call this number, and you yeah. actually meet people through voice technology. I don't know if you've heard about it, but it was like, if you want to speak no. to Heather, press one, Destiny, press, and they were real people close <laughs> by, and you talk to them, and you run out of minutes and shit. And I'm like, well, hey, give me your real number so I can call you. And they're like, no, nah, that's okay. I'm like, bitch, I just wasted all my free uh, trial membership thing here talking to you. I don't know if you remember that dude. I, I forget the name of it, but it, it's the Star News, Wilmington Star News, had a um, a meeting place ad oh, thing. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you call it up and you talk to other people and shit. That was cool, you know. Right? I, yeah, I remember that. I, um, I, I, but I, I didn't do that around here. But I know exactly, um, you know exactly uh, as well what you're talking about. So. So, but yeah, it, it's 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 all right when you have that to kind of help you, especially when you don't have somebody. Um, but it's it just to me, it's just funny that you know, basically, um, it, it's there, but it's those pros and cons, and it works out on both sides. So, me, I'm just glad that you know, I can be able to you know, to do whatever I can do and just enjoy you know, my life and just enjoy the things I want to do. You know, and, and, and if I can find someone that I can spend time with and meet, that's great. And it's great that you have these outlets. The only problem is, it's like, you go on, like, um, my yearbook site now. It's called Meet Me. They're no longer really social sites because you go to Meet Me, and all you do is you'll click somebody's, uh, somebody's picture, and all you can yeah. do really is comment. And they'll comment, and you're like, that's a beautiful picture of you. And they're like, oh, thanks. And then you'll sit there the next time and they'll go around and they'll be, and then, then you'll get a message, a notification about that picture thinking, well, hey, maybe she wrote me back. Guess who it is? It's Pedro. Somebody else commenting. Yeah, yeah. Pedro, Pedro's commenting to it. Uh, <laughs> Pedro. I yeah. And it, don't um, mean any, it don't mean anything, dude. That's what yeah. I was saying earlier. <clears throat> like with Tiff, dude, I would send her the best comments. I would send you screenshots of it. 
mm-hmm. where to the to where she got used to it. I made it a habit, and she would look forward to hearing my my comments because I would just try to send her the best comments. That's when I was in the system playing the social media game, trying to get her attention because just commenting on a girl's picture occasionally and saying, Hey, you're cute, blah, blah, blah. It don't mean anything because Pedro will comment. And uh, if you really like a girl, just keep up with her, keep commenting with her and, and then eventually time it right and send her a PM and see if she responds to it. Slowly move in until you can pet the deer, like you said earlier, in that brilliant analogy. So, <laughs> it's, yeah, man, it's all about the game and how you play it. It's Triple H. We're going to call her Woman. <laughs> well, you've been hung up on the you, man. <laughs> no, I ain't hung up on nobody, dude. It's just oh, I get that from I get that from missionary. Oh, missionary. Was, Missionary says that. It's no, Triple H. Uh, it's all about the game. No, I just mean, I, like, last night I heard you mention it last night, and I was like... Well, well the reason I mention it now is because I said it's all about the game and how you play it. Then I thought about Triple H, you know. So, <laughs> I ain't hung up on the motherfucker, but nah. Hung up. I mean, He's the main event of WrestleMania. Yeah. I wish I was Triple H. Shoot. Yeah, man, I, I admire Triple H. Look at him, dude. I mean, he started off as a mid Carter, worked his way up, married a boss's daughter, man. Shit, that's the American yeah. dream. He played the game. He played the game, man. <laughs> we can all be Triple H on social media, dude. That's you true. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that's true, man. But Rick I, Flair I, being flamboyant, Frank Sinatra being flamboyant. You know, I try to learn from them guys. Like, what is their secret? You know, they play mm. the game, dude. They play the game. <laughs> well, I tell you, man, it's 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 something else, though. But yeah, man, get back what I'm saying. Social media can be an up and a downer. It just depends on how it works for you. <laughs> you just have to learn to be careful. All you can really give advice to people and that, that watch this video is just, for at least from Bill Mack here, is just be careful. And and always always be very precise and listen to what's being said and how it's being said. You you have to be careful because people are good talkers these days. You have to use a little bit of common sense and be more mindful and and don't fall for anything. Let you, let your head first. Use your top head first and and think about these things and process it. Don't jump the gun so quick because people on these sites females. On these social media uh, platforms, have can play the game and have played the game and probably yeah. played the game. So from Bill Mack, I know Bull okay. Bull can tell yeah. you his advice, but that's just from me. Well, let me let me clarify, ladies and gentlemen. When I when I'm playing the game and I'm doing these flirts and stuff like that, I'm playing to win her heart. You know, I mean, well, I'm trying to win her and keep her. I'm not just fucking around i don't i don't have that luxury so when i say play the game i mean i mean you know play it seriously uh be sincere if you like the girl do roll the dice play the game do whatever you take the steps to get her attention you know compliment her so on and so forth learn how to play the game to win her heart because you want to win her heart because you love her you know and that's how it was with tiff man i fell in love with her and I was playing the game the best I could, man, and and just to, just to, to win to win her back, you know. And, um, you know, right. and I had her, I got it, I got attention from her, and I was just surprised by that because she had, she reached the Facebook limit. She had fucking five thousand friends, and I was in like her top three, dude. Because talking to her all the time, she messaged me back, and I was just flattered by that because my yeah. psychology worked with her. And I only did that because I wanted her. I wasn't doing just to fuck around. That's just a waste of time. Right. So I mean, I mean, just study the game and play it. You know, it's but it's a game. But also, you know, be serious and responsible, like you're saying. Be careful. But uh, just do what you got to do to win her heart. You know, it don't matter how you win the match. You can cheat. Do whatever it takes to win the match. Just win the match. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me, you know. So he might think I talk slick or whatever, but I ain't got nothing, man. I'm just trying to win me a good woman. 
That's all. I'm trying to get your votes, people. I'm trying to get your votes and your subs. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> so I always come off as that type, but I don't have nothing. Ah! That's all right, dude. It's, it's understandable. At least, you, you, at least you're being yourself, bud. That's really this all you. Is, on the flip side, though, once you got girls talking to you on your pictures and shit, it's going to make the other girl jealous, and she'll suddenly notice you. You know, once you play hard to get, and they and that girl that takes you for granted sees that there's other women trying to talk to you as well. That's right. when they suddenly want you. You know, it makes you more desirable. That's right. Yeah, that's why my friend, my friend Queenie, helps me out with that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so sexy, Brandon. I tell her about, hey, Queenie, tell me I'm sexy and shit. Oh, Brandon, you're so sexy in that picture. You know, just so girls will be like, make me more desirable. You know. Well, Lee, and it's good that you got somebody play it. Like that, you play it, you know. <laughs> So, dude, other than that, I'm just straight up and just be honest as I can be and just do what I can do. Yeah, exactly. That's what you got to do. I mean, dude, every time I'm straight up, every time I'm straight up with a woman, it, she fucking runs away. And I that you about her. Exactly. It's just I see that a lot in women. Like, hey, Tiff, are you getting married? Block. You know, Destiny, why are you breaking up with me? You know, oh well, because I don't want to be with you no more via text. You know, it's just. I'm like, I'm not gonna punch you. I'm not gonna punch you in the face, sweetheart. I'm just trying to get some answers. I even say it this. I even phrase it this way. I say, look, honey, I'm not mad at you. Whatever you tell me, yes or no, I will not be mad at you. Just let me know. I will respect you for it if you just simply tell me the truth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting no response. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I made it as easy as possible for you to tell me the truth, and they're still like. <laughs> uh -uh. Yep, and we'll tell you right there what happens. So <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> it's crazy and it's immature because I grew up thinking women mature faster than than men. You know, women are are you know, they mature faster than men, and uh, they supposed to look for personality and stuff like that. And a, a lot of them do, to be fair. But I, I think it's taking longer for people to mature nowadays in the younger right. generation. Yeah, <sighs> so I'm just true. glad. I'm just glad I didn't have any kids in my twenties, because I would be fucked right now if I had to pay child support and whatnot. Because I wouldn't <laughs> be with that person right now. <gasps> right. Now, if, if I got married, if I got married in my in my twenties and I'm still married and had kids, sure, I'm all about that. I'm just glad I didn't make a mistake. Like I'm just glad I was careful. And I made sure to use right. protection with whoever I was with. And I always say, if you're with me six months from now, we'll go, we, we'll take it to the next step or whatever, you know? Yeah. I have yeah. to, man, because I can't, I, I got to, yeah, that's a serious thing, dude. And, oh, and I Tiff, I'm there. And Tiff okay. hiding her engagement rings and stuff like that. I'm like, do you not realize how important being engaged is? And her boyfriend's an idiot for that. I'm just using that as a, as a, you know, example. Right. But that's, from from my experiences, I'm like this bitch is getting married and she's trying to hide it on Facebook just so because she's so addicted to attention from other guys. Yeah, I'm like you not realize how serious marriage is. Yes. What the? F I just, <laughs> and and it's always going to be a serious step, and they're just going to have to learn the hard way. Good buddy, learn the hard way. That's right. Yes, they do. And other people think they can walk into a relationship and move in with somebody and think that things. <laughs> Are still right. gonna stay the same, and they're gonna do this, and they're gonna do that. They're gonna hit the hard reality wall crashing, buddy, because ain't no, but there's nothing in this world that they're gonna find out worse than thinking that things are still gonna go on. Because you, one thing you talk to a woman across sky, and one thing you may go spend overnight with them, but when you live with them, for like I live with them, that's a total different ball game. That whole you, you, you totally is gonna go out the window, but there's nothing. It's going to keep you up uh, from being thrown out of it. You got to better come in a mindset, and people think like that better take an inventory of their life and realize that because it ain't going to be the same when you with that person. Not at all. It's completely, it's completely different, dude. Yeah. You don't have as much freedom. You got a responsibility. It's not all. It's not all about you. It's about us type of mentality, and it's very different. 
You know, you're absolutely exactly. right. That's exactly so. right. So people, be careful with this social media stuff. Be very mindful uh, and, and who you're talking to. Make sure you're talking to the right person. And, and do enough research. Don't just go on by what to say. If stuff don't sound, because men and women, it, when they're that, when they're very relying more on technology than talking, that means their talking skills aren't up to par. That means they can say things to you that they catch themselves in and not realize it, but you and I listening hear what they say and can see that there's a difference in it. You know, because they lack those skills to be able to, being able to talk a good game, but they spew these things out. And yeah, because they don't have to. They don't have. They don't have to do shit, but just sit there and look pretty. Yeah. yeah. So. I see the same patterns over and over and over, and that's when I say red flag here, red flag there. Right. Like when I was date when I was dating Addy, me and Addy took a picture on the couch, and she said, "Hey, don't share this picture on Facebook." I said, "What? Get the fuck out my house!" That was a red flag to me. She's like, "I just don't want my mom to see it." I said, "I just talked to your mom yesterday. She knows we're dating." I said, you're full of shit. I said, you just want to hide me so you can promote yourself. And um, I broke up with her for that, man. Well, we broke up with each other, but uh, absolutely, man. I call, I, I can saw, see right through that shit. It's just some guys, they know better, but they're so pussy whipped, they just play along with it, like Tiff's boyfriend. That's an that's easy person to do that, too. That is if, I bought my girlfriend, if I bought my girlfriend an engagement ring, and she sh and she shared it on Facebook and then quickly deleted it. I'll take my fucking ring back. Yeah, you know? I agree with that. You. Would, that because she don't love you. When you when you're in love when you love somebody, you don't want to. You don't care about other people like that. You don't want that attention. You got everything you need. You're satisfied. You're satisfied. Don't be greedy. You know. Yeah, that's true. And and, and that's hard, they don't but. Love me. <laughs> They don't, man. You know, it really don't. <laughs> that, that's why it sometimes, it, it to me, it's aggravating because to me, it just seems like, you know, people could actually do more and, and people actually can and say more. But when, you, when you're, you know, that's why I said, and, and telling everybody when they listen, just to be more mindful, listen, be observant to what is being said because you can, but if you're not careful, some people can talk a good game. You just have to catch a little to see if there's any little loopholes. And like uh, uh, Brandon said, if you see if, if the red flags will show up and when you least expect, you just have to be careful and actually watch for them. You know, not saying discredit a relationship because you don't want to not give the person a chance, but you just want to be careful with yourself and your heart that you don't allow your guard to go down to be unprotected if something is bound to happen if that person turns out to be not who they are so that's just my advice and that's just where i would go with it you just you don't want to you don't want to just share that out there because it can be harmful you can fall in that trap it's not quicksand you you get stuck in quicksand and there's nothing to there's nothing to, to hold you to hold you up. You're going to sink down because you got caught in it, and that's not what you want to do. Sometimes uh -huh. social media can be that trap and suck you in, and then you realize, well, I'm already up and knee deep in it, and I can't get out because you allowed yourself in. What I'm thinking, you got to process and make sure and, and be more mindful of your surroundings. Be more mindful of how the internet can be, and just kind of take things easy. Guard your heart. Just a little bit tighter than what you would, but just be more mindful of the people that you talk to on here because social media it can do its own thing, you know, and it does have its yeah. own. Just pay attention, be mindful, and listen to your gut. Now, a lot of times your gut is correct on a lot of things um, because the problem is with a lot of guys, it's so hard for us to get a girl and get her to stick with us that we want to believe everything she's saying. Like, you know she's playing you on social media, but you don't want to believe that because you just want a girlfriend, you know. And I've, I've been guilty of that, sure. You know, like I, I knew she was probably talking to somebody else, but I didn't want to believe that. And, you know, my gut was telling me it was wrong and so on and so forth. But the older I get, the better I, I get with it in general. I just mm -hmm. try to be straight up with them, you know, and just – 
call them out on their bullshit. But yeah, yeah women just, just, just a lot of women they could just play guys so easily on social. You don't know who to trust anymore. Right. Just don't know. Who, it's so hard to trust people nowadays, man. And a good relationship is built on trust. There ain't no trust. There ain't no relationship. Not a good one. You yeah. Know? Like a friend of mine, a friend of mine said he would never trust his wife or trust a woman. I said, dude, you have to take a chance and trust a woman to truly love her. But I get why he's saying that. I'm guarded too, but. If I'm in, right. a, if I'm married to a woman, of course I'm going to trust her. I have to take, I have to take that risk because trust is love. Trust yeah. is love. You know, it's like that movie where Robert De Niro, Casino. You know, he said, "This is my wife, and I'm going to trust her." He took a chance, and she was playing him the whole time, but he wouldn't believe it because he said when they got married, he would trust her. But um, but not all women are that fucking vicious. And again, we're not talking about all women here. Mostly just like younger women. They they just take the, the players, just the players out there. Because back in the 90s, women could say that men are players all they want to. So yeah, I'm just calling them out on their bullshit, dude, because it happens all the time. You know? Yeah, women women are just – they, they know they have the upper hand these days and times. They know yeah, they do. Yeah, they sure do, man. They sure do. They they got the easy ride, man. They got the easy ride. Right. You know, I seen a fat female pig get a hundred likes on her pictures. I'm like, well, fuck, and I can't even get ten likes <laughs> just because she's some, just because she's a female. But that's okay, man, because I'd rather be on this side anyway. So when I get something, I appreciate it. It's more right. meaningful to me. Kind of like the Mustang analogy. I didn't get my first Mustang until I was 24, where and it was an older Mustang, a 90s model, where I see 18-year-old teenagers out there with fucking um, brand new Mustangs that their parents bought them, or, they, oh, yeah. or the rednecks with the big trucks that their parents bought them. And I had to save up my money to get my own dream car, but you know what? It was more meaningful to me. Like, yeah, my Mustang might be older than yours or whatever, but you know what? I saved my money and it's more meaningful to me, and you never understand that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Very true, man. Very true. Very well well spoken with that. Very much. I agree I try, with you. I try. I'm 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 just kinda I'm kind of sloppy tonight, just kind of tired and shit. I, I mean I'm enjoying this. I'm glad we did this video. Yeah. Because we want our subscribers to be well informed, you know, and 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 by like saying subscribing to you and your your subscribers and things and whatnot, they just can see that and get that advice and those out there that Twitter that can that can see it and stuff and you know and they can read this thing and maybe it can help somebody. You never know what what one video can can reach out and do to someone. So it's always good to helpful to give advice to people and. And talk about situations just real life. I mean, there's too much fantasy out there in the world for people to talk about. It re they leave a lot of realized, realistic things, that, and and not they're not spoken about. They're not talked about. But there has to be somebody or some people out there that are willing to talk about the issues and be straight up about them and not being so PC all the, the truth, time. The truth hurts. People hate hearing the truth, man. But my thing is, I live by the truth. I live in reality. Because I ain't got that's just that's just where I live at, and I don't live nowhere else. And I just I just embrace it and accept the facts, and uh, and just do the best I can with it. You know, I just accept okay. reality and uh, how things are, and do the best I can with it. You know, and like you said, people want to live in a fantasy world and shit like that. It's not always sun sunshines and rainbows. But the yep. sun will shine on a dog's ass once in a while. A broken clock is right twice a day, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very true, man. That is very well, very well spoken, my friend. Very well spoken. <laughs> Shit. But that, that is the sun that will shine the on a dog's ass. Sometimes. Dude, when when Destiny, dude, when I got when Destiny dated me for two years, she was a pretty girl, and I, and I did not, I could not believe this pretty girl was dating me, man. I just couldn't believe it. And uh, and when she called me the next day and said she wanted to see me again and date me again, I said, man, I am so lucky. I can't believe this. I said, even the sun will shine on a dog's ass once in a while. That's what I told is what I told Destiny on our second date together. I said, I can't believe this is happening. 
She's like, what do you mean? I said, I can't believe we're seeing each other again. I said, even the, she's like, you're so romantic. And I gave her a rose. And I said, I said, even the sun will shine on a dog's ass once in a while. You know, <laughs> I'm just a piece of shit to her, you know. So I'm like, oh, yeah, man. But yeah, man, I said uh, that's totally a day. life. Life is full of booby traps. Reality is full of booby traps. Gotta mm -hmm. learn how to avoid them motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. I, in, I got a flat tire bill one day in Wilmington. It's full of booby traps. Oh. We're on our way to go see some girls, you know. Yeah, sure. man through and the man threw the man's keys down there and I said, Hey, what's your keys? <laughs> well, that man throw your keys down like that. Yeah. <laughs> man, <go laughs> to me, you know? <laughs> Let the man throw your keys down like that. So I take your keys. Let him know your keys. And politely put them down there. Put them down there. Don't throw them down there. They make his keys and Joe's keys. You know? That's when you, know clap, that's when you clap your hands real hard and say, hey, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I said, hey, I'm from Chapman. You don't know me. That's He's exactly from right. You don't know him. We from this area. You don't know us. Let's yeah. take the keys and politely put them in his hand. Politely put them in his hand. That's right, dude. But that's pretty much all I got to say about, about relationships for the night, man. But I, I appreciate um, you helping me out with this topic video and me helping you out with your topic video. Helping yep. each other out, dude, because, uh, you know, that's trying right. to keep our channels going, man. We're doing what we can to survive here. That's yeah. right. We can definitely do that, Nettle. I'm glad we can handle this topic here and uh, maybe get together for future videos when we have topics like this that we can do them. You know, together. I know sometimes we'll have. We can do them when we team. When we team up together, we can do them more often. I'm trying. I'm helping you make your own topic videos, and you're helping me at the same time. Because if it weren't for you, I wouldn't feel like doing this tonight. So I'm just trying to pr get as many videos as I can out there. Because the more videos you do, the more active you are, the more followers you get, right. and the, you know stuff like that. So I'm getting close to a hundred, man, and um, it's, it's really. It's really humbling, you know, to me. It's really humbling, and mm -hmm. uh, it makes me want to do it. So a lot of times, I might not feel like doing a video, and I'm like, well, if Bill will help me help me do a video, that'd be fine. And I'm also helping you at the same time, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to trying to do here, you know. It's all about so, being uh, humble, dude. All about being humble. It's like our our friend our friend Raven the Specter, man. He's He's throwing out videos left and right, left and right, man. And you and I are just struggling, man. We have to team. We had to team up just to just to get something out there. Well, man. it's just that we. <laughs> it, it's just that our content is variety over a variety of 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 subjects. It's well, not. I was just picking. I, I'm just taking, I was taking on one particular thing because that that's easy to do. If I want to talk about crayons, I can do one video on red, one video on blue, one video on green. One video on how they can break easily. One video on how they can, uh, you know, to stay in, drop coloring in the lines with them. What one video where they're drawing out the lines of them. You can take one topic and, and spread a thousand little uh, mini ones after that. But you and I really try to tackle uh, topics and stuff that are really relatable to everyday life. And and a lot of times we do when we do wrestling or whatever it is, we try to do stuff that's talk, that's typically related to everyday life so i am more than uh appreciative of you uh helping me with this and us trying to work on these things and sending some of these topic videos together and you know sometimes we're going to have videos we're going to do together and sometimes not but it's always good that we can put two brains together and hopefully help someone uh with with advice or whatever and like i said if they have any questions they can hit my uh, subscribe to me like mine subscribe to you like yours leave comments in the sections of it, we'll try to answer them. I mean, we're wanting to help. So if anybody has any questions, you know, like us and describe and subscribe to us and, and share us uh, with other people. So uh, with that with that being all said and that with understanding this, uh, I will say so long for now. And this is uh, Bill Mack along with. Uh, miss, Mr. Brandon, you can follow me at Twitter um, at BulletB1983. And, uh, you guys take care. Thanks for thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Very humbling to me. Yes, man. It's it's very it's very humbling to have you on here to, uh, tonight for this uh, particular uh, subject, and hopefully uh, many more to come when we have our uh, particular topic videos together. And this is Bill Mack here, 
and you can follow me actually at mine i'm on facebook uh facebook.com slash w mac three twitter at bill underscore mac three and my uh my instagram is bill dot mac so feel free to uh and plus the, and we can post them down in the description so everyone take care have a good night until next time catch you later, later.